Hi guys, this is Siddharth from Team Digit and a couple of days ago I got to attend what is perhaps one of the most significant events for PC gaming this year. The event of course was NVIDIA's Editor's Day Conference which was held at Monterey Bay, California. So over the course of two days we got to see some interesting new developments from NVIDIA and its partners like Oculus Rift and Microsoft. The biggest reveal at the event was of course the much awaited GTX 980 and some of the new features built into Maxwell like MFAA and DSR which is Dynamic Super Resolution. The link to the review of the GTX 980 can be found in the description below and also detailed articles on some of these new technologies. But for now I'll be walking you through the demos that Nvidia had in store for us over the course of the two days. To kick off the event with a bang, Nvidia wanted to relate this huge event or milestone in gaming to a milestone for mankind which was the moon landing. How did they do that? Well, they rendered in real-time 3D one of the most iconic images of the moon landing. Uh, they, they rendered this using VXGI, one of the new features built into Maxwell, like I said. So VXGI is voxel global illumination. And with this, they were once and for all able to prove some of the different light sources that were disputed by conspiracy theorists. So details follow. If, if you look up uh, images of the lunar landing, actually, this is one of the canonical shots that you'll see, you know, on Google image search, it'll be one of the first few. Um, and so uh, we started here, and uh, you probably saw in the demo, we kind of pull out here, so you can see that it's live, we have our, our sun uh, out there. Um, so now we can, we can kind of push in here. So you can see all of the materials that went into this. The, the LEM here uh, is a mix of, uh, there's a lot of silver foil, gold foils, copper foils, uh, paper. Actually, uh, we found reference for where they had tape on these things. So, you know, this, this was not our artist being fanciful for, for what it looked like. It, it really was pretty uh, surprising that people were able to know, both land on the moon in this thing and, more importantly, get back. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it, it turned out that we knew where the... We did some match moving, so we knew where this was, we knew where the horizon was, we knew where this was, and we knew where the camera was. But we weren't getting the lighting exactly correct. Uh, namely, uh, the brightness here on his thighs and here on his backpack were too close. Like, he should have been getting more side lighting. And it wasn't until we saw that video where there was something bright over there that we realized, oh wait, the guy holding the camera, he must be generating all that light. And so at that point, we added uh, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, indeed. And so from there, I'm afraid all of my views uh, are a little different here. You can see that, yeah, basically, he's wearing that beta cloth that's highly reflective. He's lit up like a Christmas tree, throwing a ton of light into our scene here. And so, there's both, there's with and without. You can see he gets a lot more of that side lighting, but his pack that's kind of further away from us, it doesn't benefit quite as much because it's pointed more up into the atmosphere. Hi, so I'm Max Mullen. I'm the development lead for Drive 3D at Microsoft. And what you're seeing here is the Unreal Engine 4 Infiltrator demo running on top of our DirectX 12 port of the engine. Epic, NVIDIA, and Microsoft all collaborated together to get this port running on the industry leading Unreal Engine 4. And uh, the goal is to prove to game developers that DirectX 12 is ready for you know, game developers to start porting their content, developing new content with the enhanced abilities of DirectX 12. Little spots, and as you move, that texture is moving in and out of the sample pattern, and it pops. You know, it pops on and pops off where it shouldn't. And that, let me get you into the same where I'm at. Here. Now you do it again here, and you see the difference. It's not popping at all because we have a much denser grid of samples. Oops, let me. There. And you see this. Now it's real grass, right? It's not this little jitter half sample thing. It's, it's real grass.
controller runs too. Um, playing on Shield Portable. This is actually a console mode. Um, so what we're doing is we're streaming the game from that Tiki PC to the Shield, and then we're streaming it from there to the television. And this is Borderlands 2 at 1080p. And um, we're also playing it on our Shield controller, as you can see here. So, very low latency, um, beautiful graphics, 1080p. You could also, you know, go around the house and just play with the shield. This is a demonstration of console mode, showing that you can plug it into your TV and play with your friends and family too. So, so the shield is getting uh, data wirelessly via... Yes, uh, over Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, yeah. correct. A 5 gigahertz router. Yes. Okay. So what we're showing here is we're showing a technology we call GameStream, which is the ability to stream your PC games from your GeForce GTX-based PC over your internet to Shield, uh, Shield tablet, uh, our new tablet we just launched about a month ago. And here I'm streaming uh, EA's Titanfall. Uh, so what the PC is doing is it's rendering the game, it's encoding it into a video format and then streaming the video. Uh, over to the tablet, and the tablet is outputting via HDMI to the TV. And then I've got a wireless controller here that I'm actually sending inputs back over my internet to uh, the PC, and it acts as if uh, I'm just playing the PC game natively because the latency is so good. So it supports the Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. You can play a Bluetooth mouse. Okay. If you also get um, what's called a USB OTG cable, like an on-the-go cable, you can also plug in USB keyboard and mouse into it as well. So yeah, you could play like, you know, if you wanted to, you could play like MMOs like World of Warcraft or League of Legends, those type of things. So saving the best for last, the Oculus Rift demo completely blew my mind. Uh, the car flip demo, as it was being called later on towards the end of the event, uh, that you see there in on the two display screens, has never been seen before and literally stretches the boundaries of what is possible in VR today. The last experience of VR I had had was quite a long while ago and it was a rather basic looking roller coaster demo by Pepsi on the DK1. Now this DK2 unit that I have on has come a long way. Two 980s are powering a resolution of 960 by 1080 for each eye and producing some really good quality 3D. The pixel density is still not good enough when you take into account how close the screens are to your eye. But hey, I'm not complaining because the overall experience was quite mind-blowing. So Unreal, uh, the Unreal Engine 4 does a really great job of rendering all of these you know, nice tiny little uh, things in the, in the scene. Uh, all of these particles that you see flying past me, they look extremely realistic. Including this huge car now that you see in front of me, it's flipping over my head. As you can see, I'm like going completely back and the motion capture camera over there is capturing all the head movements on a six axis. And I can look behind, entirely behind the car. I can look up, left, wherever I want. Movement of uh, freedom of looking is complete 360. And Boom, that's it. The demo is really great. Epic VR, brilliant stuff.